numbers. When we have 10 million numbers, for example, one way is to just uh, add them one by one. I set a variable to zero, go through each number, add the number into my accumulating variable, and uh, at the end of the loop, I will know the sum total. As simple as that, just adding the numbers, right? So we have that algorithm here. So let's copy and paste it. All right, are we there? Yeah. And paste it. And let's just check. Um, we need to tap here because this is where we start our algorithm. And this is where we end the algorithm. Okay, so just a quick overview of what is going on in this code here. We are going to import this module called time. Time is a pre-written uh, module that is not automatically loaded when we run Spider when we run Python. It's not loaded. We have to explicitly import time, but we don't have to write it. So that's nice. We just import it. This time allows us to look at the systems clock so the inside the cpu there's this systems clock that's spinning you know crazily at nanosecond level uh, and when we do this time dot performance counter at nanosecond level it gives us a snapshot of the clock and then it gets copied into the variable star so we look at the clock then we run our algorithm and then we look at the clock again and we find the difference in the timing in nanoseconds all right so that's the whole idea now what's our algorithm? Very simple. We we set our accumulator, right? Then we look through for i. We look through all the ten million pieces of data. We'll come to that in a while. But our data variable has a list of ten million data, ten million integers from zero to nine point nine 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 million. So run through each integer and add that integer into our total because this says total equals to total plus i. It means the same thing. So once this loop is done, we would have gone through, sped down the 10 million numbers, and total will now have the actual uh, sum of all the 10 million numbers. All right, very cool, right? So that's very simple algorithm. You might be wondering, is there any easier than this? Answer is yes. Turns out that, that our system provides this built-in function. We don't have to import anything it's already automatically imported. All right, so when we say what is sum, uh, Python says it's a function, right? How do we use sum? We say help sum. It says, well, it actually takes an iterable, a list, a range, and whatever, an engine that will generate number to, uh, it will automatically run through that engine, that list, that number, and add them all up, and then return the total. So where is the list of 10 million numbers? It is generated by this function called range. So when we run range number of numbers, 10 million here, it will return not all the numbers because then it will hang my computer, right? Uh, you know, crazily printing all the 10 million numbers. Instead, it returns to us an engine basically actually implemented as a function, an engine called iterate, iterator, because this, this function has got special purpose. When you look at it, it's a function. It's just static. It's like an engine. This engine is capable of running 10 million numbers, but it's not started yet. How do we start it? When you force it, you like convert that engine into a list of numbers, then yes, then list will really run the engine and churn out all 10 million numbers. So here, this line here will take some time to run, but it will be within seconds, so we can just wait, wait it out. All right. So we'll generate that 10 million numbers explicitly. It's actually listed out in the memory, so that takes time, and but we'll, we'll actually generate that. Then we'll run our, our algorithm, time it, and we'll run the sum, which is high level, pre-written, optimized, remember? We see which one wins. You want to guess which one will win? Which one takes shorter? number of nanoseconds. Okay, let's run. Generating data, bingo, right? So this is microseconds, milliseconds. So that's 1.1 second versus 0 0.27 seconds. 
roughly speaking, if it's uh, 1.2 seconds versus 0.3 milliseconds, that would be four times faster, right? All right, so, so um, our sum is going to be four times faster than our manually written algorithm. Try again. And uh, we see that the numbers fluctuate a little bit depending on the busyness of the current state of the CPU and how fast your CPU. Your, your CPU may be faster, so you might see different numbers here. But let's see that, right? Let's see that my, uh, my, on my computer, the difference clearly is about four times, sometimes 4.2 times, sometimes 3.9 times. But with 10 million numbers, definitely is four times faster with just running some. Okay, so this is the kind of efficiency we are talking about. If you're not careful, if you're thinking like this and you write it out, all right, and then you will quietly lose all the time. Imagine you're going to test this again and again and again, not over 10 million, but one gigabyte or 100 gigabytes of data like that. Just one addition. You're going to suffer four times loss in time. <laughs> loss in your real time and time is money. Imagine that. So that basically is a sort of, I hope it's an impactful illustration of how things can really magnify into crazy loss in efficiency if you're not careful. And how to be careful, because one can never be careful, right? Very simple. Keep in mind these two ideas, all right? Attack the macro uh, efficiency by choosing known fast algorithms. Then look for implementation of those. If those implementation of, of the fast algorithms have already been written, sometimes multiple times by different programmers, download them and uh, run them. Because by and large, from reputable sources, they tend to be already well-written, stable, reliable, produce correct result, and optimized. That means they are fast, right? So definitely use them. Okay, that goes for our discussion for clarity and efficiency. Uh, amazed? Impressed? No? Right, whatever it is, if you have comments, please write them down uh, when you do that. I, uh, not Python, but uh, YouTube will send me a tinkle and uh, ask me to look at it and I'll be very, very eager to see what you have got to say. And of course, as all YouTubers go, if you like, please click like. If you don't like, please click like. If you like, you subscribe. If you don't like, well, I will learn. I have already learned from the YouTubers. Still, click subscribe, right? Okay, good. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.